So right now it's a new day for this stage of restoration. I have cleaned the little parts for this machine with baking soda and vinegar. Um, right now is the time where I strip the paint because my next step for restoration for this machine is repainting. But this is an, an amateur one because I don't have the right tools, the professional tools for this. Um, there is a solution they call, I think it's a paint stripper. It's a solution where you rub it on the machine and then the paint comes off after uh, uh, quite a while of curing, I think. Right now I'm just going to uh, chip all the paint using this tool. I think it's uh, something, it's, it's meant to scrape something, I think. So, um, initially this machine comes with a lot of areas already gone from the paint. So I think might as well just take it all off and then repaint a new coat for it. Um, but um, to my machines, I usually just strip certain parts, not all. Because from this body, I think I would just sand it off so that the edges are not raised. Um, it won't be as smooth as a professional paint work, but this is my own machine, so it's okay. But I will definitely make sure it is all smooth on the back because my machines in the future, in the near future, I will use it to make loops and use it as an actual sewing machine. So I need something to be very smooth on the back so my fabric can glide smoothly. So that is. Um, that is the agenda now for this video. Right now, it's just um, loosening up the paint. Um, I just rub um, the bed, all the bed, with um, the same baking soda and vinegar. Maybe to just get it um, to be to rub it off abrasive using the abrasive, and then I would scrape it with this. I would skip on perhaps at the back here because it's not some focal point but i would try to do it a bit here and the rest i would just send it off you can see that decals are already gone here there the decals are gone here here and at the back and um, in the middle is totally gone perhaps this is caused by being rash or something they used to put here um yeah that's the plan the machine has been all cleaned right now that it it's not a matter of the machine moves or not, so I'm glad. Right now I'm just going to focus to strip it off. So I've done the middle part here successfully. It's all bare metal. I would suggest that if you are going to do this in stages, if you are doing exactly what I'm doing, um, after you have scraped it all off, don't forget to put a coat of oil on because you might um, expose it because it might be really really bare and you might get rust if you leave it alone all like this. It, it, will be, uh, it will be wise if you put a coat of oil on top and you can continue it any time of the next day perhaps for your next stitch. So that is it. I'll make some score marks here and I'm going to rub it off, scraping it. It's going to be a very messy scene as you can see here. But um, we are moving on with this restoration. Yeah. This is just a little reminder for if anyone wants to use the same method I use to clean the machine. Um, I would uh, post another before picture of this um, singer badge and uh, the remnants of a small decal here. As you can see, there is this color discoloration here. And if you see the before picture, the decal is intact. You can see orange tint here. As you know, baking powder is an abrasive. It is used extensively in cleaning. When you mix it with vinegar, it's very effective on removing things, taking off things. So, see, this that is silvering and discoloration, discoloration for the decals. I would suggest if you are doing this on... Um, on a machine with perhaps 80%, 90% finish is uncompromised. The best way to clean your batch is using very fine steel wool, just a small ball, and then you put just a little WD-40 or 
your regular non-abrasive de-ruster or rust remover and then you can scrub very um, attentively around the batch not to smudge on the area around it that is how that is what i did on my 66 um on my yeah on my 19 i think it's 1925 uh, singer model 66 in very um, i would say like 75 percent uh, of his finish is in good condition so that's the method i used um, it's very um, painstaking um, it took a lot of time to clean it just for a batch but it will be worth it because you would not mess with the original finish around the batch but unlike here it's all gone it is hopeless you can might as well just use a really good abrasive and rub the hell out of it so that's my suggestion Hello. So right now we are on the stage of repainting. So this time I've prepped this machine um, to be repainted. And the first step that you should do is if your machine is in this condition where there are chips and there are exposed uh, spaces, just sand it um, with perhaps a medium or slightly fine. Um, sandpaper so that it is smooth because if you don't do so you need to sand it once you put a coat of paint so I prefer it this way initially I just sand it first then I'll spray it with a coat of paint um, besides so you need to cover whatever you want to avoid from the paint color such as <coughs> for this machine I covered the badge the serial number and uh, most of the holes because especially the threaded ones because you don't want paint to get there because if you have paint you will have a very hard time screwing your screw back on those holes um, besides so any painted um, any bare metal or plated metal surfaces you need to cover them because it will affect the um, how do they call it mm the small differences um the ah oh yes the term is tolerance yeah. it will um, affect the tolerance and the fit between the parts if you let the um, the pain reach there especially here on the hand wheel i covered this uh, the bare metal part around the hole top and bottom sorry there you go so i covered the plated um, bend on the balance wheel too that. and this is the treadle butt cover pretty plain you can uh, paint it straight away you don't have to cover anything both holes are not threaded no, there shouldn't be any problem especially here you, you would like you may want to cover this very carefully so that the pin won't get into the bobbin mechanism, the hook and everything because you want that to be very clean um, so yeah you can see the view I covered this because this is where the bobbin winder would attach to and this is smooth bare metal without any coat of paint um, any paint here will affect the tolerance like I said just now this is where you put the motor on hand crank this is where the balance will meet and there, I covered everything, even here and the holes. I think I missed one. I should be, I should fill this up with some tissues. There. Just like I said in previous uh, video, I left the body and the arm of the machine with whatever pin is left, and I scraped off whatever is on the bed, so it's all bare on the bed much smoother now so I think I'll proceed with the spray painting now I won't be recording that because it's going to be a very messy affair but I'll show the result soon all right so I've painted my machine finally so it was quite um, quite a time to prepare the machine because 
you have a lot of holes to fill in with um, <coughs> some stoppers like from tissues or newspapers that you roll and fit it into the holes um, right now let me show you the materials that I use to paint my machine <coughs> so usually for sewing machine uh, repainting usually people would put a primer coat first usually in white or in some other nude colors um, but for me I found this one product from Ace Hardware um, I think it's an American store but I'm in Malaysia and they have a branch here so I bought this Paint, this premium gloss enamel paint, spray paint, um, which included primer coat inside it, so you don't have to put primer and paint. So it's a single, um, single application, I would say. But it depends on you on how much, how many coats you want to put uh, to your machine. So right here, you can see it. It already has some gloss to it. And I'm quite happy to see this. <clears throat> this is my usual result um, from my usual restoration activity before. Um, here I put only three coats, um, two on the arm and body, and I put three coats for the bed because the bed is bare, is bare metal. So um, additional coat would make it um, a similar thickness um, with other parts of the machine. Here you see I already painted the bobbin winder bobbin winder setup um, i mean for prepping for painting is quite tedious you can see you have to wrap a lot of parts around with tissues but i think it's worth it and the hardest part it would be the rack i would i would call this horizontal rack gear um there in the middle um it hardly sticks to the scotch tape that i'm using but i managed to make it stick at least just now and you can see the treadle cover is adequately coated you would see that there are quite a number of bumps on the treadle cover that is from the old paint which I did not send I forgot to send it um, before which is my bad but it's okay it's not something I focus on but if you want a proper finish a clean one you should send throughout the parts of the machine the body the arm cylinder bed the treadle cover and even the balance wheel if you would and you will get a very smooth finish and it looks it has some gloss to it so it it is akin to using a primer coat primarily and then you put the second coat of paint it looks the same and voila this is repainting done so I'm going to take some rest and figure out how am I going to put decorations on this machine because I plan because here in Malaysia it's not easy to get um, the reproduction decals even so um, shipping from America would cost a lot to me so my only option is either leave it plain bare like this or I can I can sketch my own design or even stencil the decorations on the machine. So I'm opting for the third option which is stenciling. I already printed out some decals pattern on paper. I'm going to cut it and try to trace it on the machine and I hope that works. So I'll share with you soon. Hello. So I have scrapped the idea of decorating my machine with some stencil decorations or not because I have tried it and it doesn't work as what I wanted but it um, it was successful in my other machines although it doesn't look as refined or as neat as a real decal so I decided not to decorate it and let it and leave it clean like this because I think the batch positions will make it look special because it's much lower than the usual class 15 and the pillar is more curved so I think it's more it's prettier this way actually I think so I scrapped the decorating idea and I repainted it again um, but after that the finishes 
I mean the 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 texture of the pink coat is not as fine as my first attempt. If you can see, the the, the, the texture is not smooth. Even though I already um, scraped off all the paint, the previous paintwork, the previous uh, chip paint. Um, this is I think this is because of my ventilation problem because I'm using a ceiling fan right now and I mistakenly set it on number three because if you need to pin something you cannot this is to my knowledge you cannot switch on the fan because it will mess up with the drying process for the first I think 10 or 20 minutes I forgot to turn off my fan and the paint becomes wrinkly um, besides getting wrinkly if you even um, if even if you manage to control your ventilation uh, area around you um, spray paint um, has the tendency of getting this texture where they call it orange peel it is like the texture of facial skin I think um, because it's not perfectly smooth unless you do several process of uh, coat paint um, and you send it in between the coats then you can get um, a very smooth a mirror like I think but I'm skipping that for this project so yeah I think this is the final look I prefer to have the shine rather than the smoothness I don't mind it because after you um, put the final clear coat it will smooth yourself out that's what I think to it actually now to the point of um, finishing up with clear coating I use the traditional shellac um, coating this is the brand that uh, this is the product that I used I think this is from America actually this is an American brand I think you can get it if you can find it near you this is Zinsa's Bullseye Shellac and if I'm not mistaken from my readings in the internet this is one of the last company to manufacture shellac in this way I think in, in a spray can because most of the shellac available in America I think is in pellets form or in a dry form or in powder form where you have to dilute it with denatured alcohol I think so <clears throat> that's to it I definitely don't have the means and time to actually do a shellac concoction in my house so I think this spray paint is a lifesaver to me and I think um, you can finish two machines with just one bottle so I think it's quite you can save a lot with this so as you see here I already um, sprayed the clear coat on the machine and I sprayed together with the um, metal parts like the slide plate the needle plate the face plate the treadle belt cover and the hand wheel but um, just a caution um, precaution for this is you still need to cover the areas um, which will come in contact with each other such as the clutch knob it will contact through here you need to cover this because if the shellac gets here the tolerance will be changed and you you won't you will have trouble um, setting up the clutch knob and other parts too such as the bobbin winder connection here and obviously the needle all the bars in the front the fit dog and the bobbin system underneath you have to cover all that just the same as when you are painting it at the first place so I think this is for now I will continue this when it's all dried oh before that um, I'm not sure how long other people would leave it to dry but for me I will give it two weeks to cure to let the shellac harden because this is shellac this is not varnish or something else which are fast drying this one takes time to dry because if you use it like maybe just a week it will be soft and if you put any pressure on the parts on any parts of the machine it will be dented or scratched and you will have that hardened in time and you cannot get rid of that 
unless you dilute it, you scrape it off, and then you repaint it all over again. So I would suggest if you are following my method here, just leave it for two weeks or more. The more the better actually, and it will cure in time. Usually I leave it in under the room temperature, or if you can put somewhere warmer, that will be much better I think. So that is how the drying process will go after this. So I'm going to continue this maybe in the next two weeks. Yes. Hello, so I've finally cured um, the first layer, I mean the first few layers of uh, shellac on this machine for overnight and right now I'm trying to assemble again, reassemble again all the metal parts on the machine which I have um, put a coat of shellac to. Um, I'm doing this because I will leave the machine with its metal parts intact um, and oiled and I'm going to leave them for two weeks to fully harden the uh, shellac layer coat. So you can see here, all the stuffings I put in the holes are taken out. It's quite messy you now, but it's, it will be worth it. You can see the newly clean batch. I put some paint on the stitch length lever. This is just some silly markings, but I like it. Um, and it's gold. And the serial number plate is all clean again. You can see it's a shiny, um, considerable amount of thickness um, of um, paint and shellac coat. Um, there are some accidents, the orange pillar side, but I think it's okay for me. Um, perhaps for you, you might want to sand it after two weeks and then redo the whole step again to get um, an even smooth layer. So, Yep, this is it before I left it to cure for next two weeks.